what we say around here a lot um, is if we all work together, because I do believe it starts at the top in our respective organizations, there's no reason why we collectively cannot give the business community its, its, its ethical compass. There is no capitalism without character. So I think if we can keep that all in mind today, uh, thank you for all you're already doing and thank you for being here today. We have, uh, a lot, since CSP was founded some 15 years ago, or as my daughters point out, last century, um, a lot has changed, right? The world has really continued to evolve and change. We've grown the world by basically another China. Over a billion people since CECP was formed. We've also become a world, as we see here, that is far more interconnected. Things like Facebook and Twitter did not exist when CECP started. Think about that kind of an impact and change. We're all more international. We are all more global. And companies and businesses um, are actually playing an even more important role in the world than ever before. Business is where innovation meets unmet needs. Kind of what we do, that's our founders of our companies, all we're about, how do we meet those unmet needs that are out there? And then perhaps even uh, more articulately, that every social and global issue of our day is a business opportunity in disguise. And I would pretty much, and I've looked through almost all, each company here, if you go in back to your founder, when things started, it was addressing an unmet need. So, this is us today, all right? Some 50 companies that are involved here, uh, close to $2 trillion of annual revenue, nearly 2,000 years of experience here, millions of employees around the globe. Right? That's who we all are, an opportunity to really kind of connect and partner together. This is one of the largest collections of CEOs held anywhere, um, right up there uh, you know, among Davos and, and others, but here in an intimate setting where we can all partner and connect and work together. Staying close to home will take you a long way. And we thought about uh, focusing on our own organizations and celebrating health and wellness mm -hmm. in, in ways that brought to life a real commitment to our employees and driving employee engagement, and then laddering that up to our communities. The environment is intrinsically linked to our long-term mission, uh, and that uh, it is something that fundamentally connects all of the organizations back to our community. Put, put sharply, I think uh, it was nicely summarized by Tony, that the environment is not somewhere you go to visit, but really it's where you live and you work. Many baby boomers around the table, and we said that when we went to business school or business and started businesses, we were focused on shareholder value and profit. And we never went to interviews asking, what are, what are you doing good or how, what programs do you have? Today, when you interview people, your young, young employees, uh, who come out of uh, colleges and 22 to 25 year olds, they're asking you the first question they ask is what's your corporate philanthropy or what's your social engagement? And they're willing to invest off themselves and if we are able to engage them and leadership is able to give them the direction, what you're seeing is that there isn't a conflict between um, making money and doing good at the same time. If you want engaged employees, you need to have empowered your employees and when you empower, you do assume a little bit of risk employees really look to the leader of that organization uh, for signs, for leadership on this issue, and uh, they want to hear the stories. Those are the stories that resonate, and employees, if they're going to feel engaged, have to hear the personal stories from the CEO that make it real for them and they remember. We all acknowledge the complexity of getting large companies and small companies to to uh, collaborate, play nice together around some of the more complex problems. I think the one observation we have is rather than define collaboration in, a, in, the, in the context of just getting along to solve a problem, we looked at it in the context of making a market. So looking at uh, players who are wanting to collaborate around who is a supplier, who facilitates logistics, who benefits, uh, and so on, rather than seeing them as equals, seeing roles uh, in a way to uh, bring companies together for these kind of problems. There is no dishonor to being second to somebody else's good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, and it uh, actually facilitates an idea's sustainability, make it simple, make it easier for someone to pick up where you leave off, uh, and that's a very, very powerful concept to act on. Our recommendation to CEOs is change the business. Do what Walmart did and use your leverage. Do what Unilever is doing and motivate the consumers to uh, take acts of sustainability. That uh, basically, if you fix your supply chain and then 
also work simultaneously within your company on values, integrity, culture, um, that uh, the core of this is public purpose, not just profit. Bob Forrester had me up at the Newman's Own Foundation meeting, and I was talking about some of the great stuff that Charlie Moore and everybody had been doing in CECP over the years, and some of the programs that had been developed and uh, great successes that General Mills was doing and the group at uh, Empire Realty were, were, were involved with and at Cargill and Edelman and all the rest. And when I was done, uh, Paul's daughter, Clea, uh, came over very politely and kind of looks a lot like, like Paul and looked at me and said, um, do you know what my dad would say? And I'm thinking she's going to say how proud they were of all the companies, and they certainly were that this notion that her dad had started with uh, other CEOs at the time were, would, would all be there. And she said, yeah, he'd, he'd be really proud and, and, and glad to see some of the progress. But he would say um, something like that, you know, nice start.